OK, so now let's try some a little bit advanced uh, data analytics uh, in Python. So first, let's try a simple linear uh, regression. So uh, you should have already learned this one from your statistics class. OK, so basically uh, for simple linear regression model, so we have two variables, so x and also y. And x is the independent variable and also y is the dependent variable. So if we put x and also y uh, on this chart, OK, we have some points like this. So we will assume that x and y has a simple linear relationship. So we are looking for the, the best straight line that can fit with the data. So we are looking for this line that uh, the slope, which is A, and also this is the intercept, that is B. OK, so we are looking for the best line that can fit with the data. Uh, we can use this model to predict uh, the new values of the y based on the new based on the x. Uh, we also have some measures. So r square, like for example, r square is a value that between zero and also one. So if the r square is close to zero, so that means uh, the line does not fit with the data well very well. And if the R square is close to one, so that means the line, the predicted line, fit with the data very well. Okay, so here you can see on in this scenario, so we have very high R square because you can see they they fit with the line uh, very well. So that you should trust the prediction of this line, this model. And in this case, probably the R square will be lower because you can see they don't fit um, very well. Uh, finally, we, we also have p-values. So p-value is a value that if your p-value is less than a very low um, value, so for example 0 0.05, so that means that your parameters are statistically significant. So that is something that, that will be very nice. OK, so let's see an example that in Python that how we can do a simple linear regression. And there are multiple Python libraries that can do the simple linear regression. So in, in our class, we are going to use a SciPy. So let's say from SciPy, let's import states. So that is a module that has a, a simple linear regression um, function. And to create to create this uh, regression model, so actually that's si very simple. Let's say result equals states dot linear regression, and here we just need to bring our x and y in this premises. Remember that the first variable is x, the second variable is y. So in this case, we want to predict the price of the diamond based on the weight of the diamond. So we will know that if the diamond is bigger, the price will be higher. OK, so let's the first the uh, in this case, um, the X will be weight and also Y will be the price. And we are also using the date frame uh, in Pandas to pass the data that into this states uh, linear regression function. So let's say date frame weight and also date frame price. And now let's print the result. Okay, now you can see the result. The slope is this value, intercept is this value, R value. Remember, this is R value. This is not R square. So that is R value. So R square equals the square of this R value. And we also have the P value. And we have this one. So that is the standard error of the estimated gradient. OK. Um, so let's print uh, the result uh, in a format that it's easier to read. So let's use string format. Let's report the slope is dot format where we are calling result dot slope. OK, 
So now you can see the result is easier to read. So let's also report the other variables. Uh, intercept. And let's also report uh, the R square and also P value. So R square and remember R square is the square of the R value. That R value times result dot R value. And also the P value. So let's also bring P value. Okay, so now let's write. Okay, so now you can see uh, slope intercept R square is still very high. Actually, it's, it's pretty high. So it's almost 90%. So that's a very great uh, model. And the p-value is very small. So that means all the parameters are statistically significant. That's very nice. OK, so now we have this model. So we can also make some predictions. So let's say that, for, for instance, if we have a diamond that the weight is 0.9, so what will be the price? OK, so we can use the weight times the slope and the plus this intercept. OK, so let's do that. So print and also let's use uh, the pro use a string format. So price of a diamond with the weight of this one is the price is this one. OK, and format. OK, so here let's say we want the weight is 0.9. And now let's bring the result from the model to calculate the price. So price is 0.9 times uh, the slope. OK, so let's use the slope and the plus the intercept. All right, so let's see the result. Invalid syntax. Uh, string format. Or oh, dot format, OK. Dot format. All right, so now you can see it's pretty cool. So now we have a price that diamond of the weight is this one. So now we can make predictions. OK, so that is a simple linear regression model. Uh, let's try another example that say that we, we want to do some sentimental analysis. So sentimental analysis now become very popular uh, because you can get the sentiment of, the, of your data, for example, your reviews of your products very quick so that you can take actions uh, on your sales, etc. So normally, sentimental analysis uh, will calculate um, the opinions, um, and the result will be like the polarity. Okay, the polarity is the range between negative one and also positive one. So that if the polarity is negative one, so that means uh, the sentiment is a very very negative. So the person is not happy. And if the, the polarity is positive one, so that is very positive. So that means the person is very happy. And we also have subjectivity. So that is also a value between zero and a positive one. So if the value is close to zero, that means that statement or that word is very objective. So that means they are simply talking about probably a fact. OK, so it's not personal. And if that is close to point to, uh, to one, and that is very subjective. So that is something probably is very, very personal. OK, so let's see an example in Python. OK, so sentimental analysis may sound like fancy, but actually in Python, it's very easy to do that. We know that uh, natural language processing NL uh, TK is a popular one. Uh, so however, in our class, we will try another Python library that is called text blob. So text blob is not installed by default. So let's pip install that one first. So pip install 
text blob. And remember that in notebook, we should have this escalation mark. OK, so let's write. And it will take like a few seconds that to download and also to install this um, Python library. So we can see now we are downloading and install this one. OK, so now this is done. So now let's say from text blob import text blob. OK, so remember those are the the T and the B are upper cases. OK, and let's just get the result directly. So result equals text blob. So here, let's say I love dog. OK, so let's write. Uh, so this should be a, a very positive statement. And this is also should be a very subjective. OK, so now let's see the result. So um, print. Let's still use a, a string format to uh, uh, to uh, to send out the result. So the polarity is dot format. So the the polarity is in the result dot sentiment dot polarity. And if you are curious that how do I know that how to use those Python libraries, so that is because I checked their instructions online earlier. So uh, if you go and Google those Python libraries and you will find out those in instructions, and that is very easy to understand also to, to follow. OK, so next is subjectivity. Subjectivity is. OK, result dot sentiment dot uh, subjectivity. And now let's write. OK, we can see polarity is 0.5. So remember that is above zero. So that's pretty uh, positive. And the subjectivity is 0.6. That is above 0.5. So that is a little bit uh, subjective. OK, uh, so now let's. Uh, let's also let's try to run a different sentence. Let's say I hate dog. OK, and now you can see it is very negative and also it's also very uh, subjective. OK, so this is a, a, an example of using sentiment analysis.